huge losses are inflicted on terrorists in Damascus suburbs as their gatherings are targeted in several areas. Iraqi forces take over Omar Mindan village in Baquba as raids target ISIS in Al Ambar and south of Baghdad. Four NATO soldiers are killed in an explosion near the American embassy in Kabul. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. The Syrian Arab army inflicts heavy losses on terrorists in Aleppo, Idlib, Homs, and Daraa governorates. In Aleppo, a Syrian Arab army unit has eliminated all the members of a terrorist group in Al Sayyala village and Al Saloum farm and destroyed their criminal tools. The Syrian Arab army also targeted armed men in several areas in Aleppo countryside. In Idlib suburbs, terrorists were killed or wounded, and an ammunition warehouse was destroyed in four villages in Abu Zuhur. In Homs, the Syrian Arab army has foiled an attempt by gunmen to infiltrate in the direction of the Gamestown and al -Wa'ar farms, killing and injuring many of them. Terrorists were also killed and wounded in Talbisa. In Darha suburbs, a number of armed men were killed or injured west of Ataman Road and the surroundings of Al Naima village and Triba, as well as on Tafas Ataman Road. Their machine guns were destroyed. Other armed men were eliminated south of Syria Tail building and the area surrounding Al Urdun Street, as well as in downtown Darha. In Jobar, a number of buildings, ancient houses, and the orchards surrounding them have been liberated from the armed men. A series of tunnels and trenches which connect those buildings with one another have been found. Many buildings had been trapped by the armed men before they left them. The engineering units are doing what is necessary to avoid such risk. The Syrian Arab army units have been monitoring the armed men's movements among buildings, confronting them immediately and on the spot. In Homs, the competent authorities have found a hideout in Al Hamidiya quarter in the ancient part of the city. The terrorists had used it to store their criminal equipment. Moreover, large quantities of weapons and ammunition hidden under the ground were also found during combing operations, including RPG shells, automatic rifles, binoculars, and a space transmission device. Scores of children have died or fallen ill in Sinjar, Jinjar, Taftanaz, Armanaz, Kafar Batikh, and Marat in Norman in Idlib countryside as a result of Turkish vaccinations administered to them through the so-called the Syrian coalition government. Welcome back. In Iraq, the Iraqi army continues its operations to expel the terrorist ISIS organization from the governorates of Minawa, Salah al-Din, and Al-Ambar. An Iraqi source said that three ISIS terrorists were killed during clashes east of Al-Ramadi. The Iraqi army was also able to clear Omar Mindan village northeast of Baquba after killing many terrorists. Airstrikes have been meanwhile carried out by the Iraqi Air Force targeting ISIS gatherings in Al-Ambar. On the other hand, an ISIS group was hit by an American air raid southwest of Baghdad as the Iraqi army targeted ISIS leaders in Abdul Uyya and continued to clear the surroundings of Rawa city. Six Egyptian policemen were killed and two others were wounded in a blast that targeted a military patrol along Rafah al-Arish Road north of Sinai. Egyptian competent authorities have imposed a security belt in the region and carried out a mop-up campaign in the area. In Moscow, the chairman of the Russian Duma state has warned that the reckless and irresponsible policy of the U.S. and its allies would lead the world to a new Cold War. He added that the Duma should start its session amidst international tension as the world is facing a moral disaster. He expressed confidence that such disaster would be prevented through diplomatic means. 
A suicide car bomber killed four NATO troops in an attack on a convoy near the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. The NATO-led coalition said the attack was one of the worst on the international forces in the Afghani capital in months. It was carried out near the heavily fortified embassy after months of political stalemate with the presidential elections still unresolved as most foreign combat troops prepare to leave by the end of the year. Finally, Russian President Vladimir Putin and German Chancellor Angela Merkel have discussed in a phone call the implementation of the Minsk agreement to settle the crisis in the Ukraine. Both Putin and Merkel have emphasized the importance of abiding by the terms of the agreement through implementing the ceasefire. They welcomed the decision taken during the Russian-Ukrainian European meeting held in Belarus on postponing the implementation of the partnership agreement signed by Ukraine and the European Union to January 2016. With this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break.